Lymphomas are cancers of the immune system, and the immune system is primarily lymph nodes, bone marrow, and organs like that. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is the most common form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It accounts for about 30-35% of the 75,000 or so a year lymphoma diagnoses in the United States. It is considered an aggressive but potentially curable form of lymphoma. Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is diagnosed in a patient who presents generally with enlarged lymph nodes. That's the most common presentation. And after a while, the local doctor trying to figure out what's causing it, giving it antibiotics or what have you, the patient finally undergoes a biopsy, preferably an excisional biopsy, removing the lymph node. And the biopsy is sent to a pathologist who performs the necessary stains and testing and makes the diagnosis of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The initial treatment for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is relatively standard, at least the drugs that are used. The regimen most widely used is called RCHOP, rituximab, which is a monoclonal antibody, cyclophosphamid, adriamycin, vincristine, and prednisone. And this is given intravenously, except for the prednisone, which is pills, intravenously every three weeks and the number of times you do that depends on how advanced the disease is. If it is more limited, we tend to give four cycles. If it's more advanced, we tend to give six cycles. Whereas diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is curable in 60 to 70 percent of patients, that means in around 30 to 40 percent it isn't cured. And therefore, other treatments need to be utilized. One of the more standard treatments is autologous stem cell transplantation, but this is used in a minority of patients based on age, comorbidities, and other factors. So we need to develop new drugs. There are no drugs currently approved for relapsed or refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in the United States. Therapies that are being explored include an antibody drug conjugate called polituzumab vedotin, in which you link a monoclonal antibody to basically a poison and inject it intravenously, where it goes directly to the lymphoma cells, is taken up into the cells, the poison is released, and the cells are killed. This has received breakthrough designation from the Food and Drug Administration. Another interesting drug is MORE-208, an anti-CD19 monoclonal antibody which in combination with lenalidomide has achieved a response rate of 52% with about 30% being complete remissions and a median progression-free survival of over a year in relapsed refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is extremely interesting. This has also received breakthrough designation. Other therapies of note in relapsed refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma include CAR T-cell therapy, of which there are at least three products being developed in the United States, suggesting that 30, 40 percent of patients, perhaps, can experience long-term progression-free survival, but not without some considerable toxicity and certainly expense. There are a number of additional drugs that are being evaluated for patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Lenalidomide is an immunomodulatory drug with specific activity in one of the subtypes of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma called the ABC or non-GCB subtype. This drug is being explored in the frontline setting in combination with our CHOP to see if we can improve the outcome of patients with the ABC subset. And the results of this study will hopefully be available in the near future. It is also being looked at in combination with rituximab in the relapsed refractory setting. The checkpoint inhibitors are an interesting group of drugs which re-energize the body's immune system to fight the lymphoma. There are two of these that have been FDA approved, nivolumab and pembrolizumab. In Hodgkin's lymphoma, they are extraordinarily active. 
However, their activity in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma has been to this date modest as single agents. That isn't to say that in combination with other drugs, they might provide additional benefit. This is the subject of a number of ongoing clinical trials. Clinical trials are always an option for patients for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. For one thing, we're only curing 60 to 70 percent in the frontline setting, so we need to improve on that. And there are some important studies being conducted. For example, the Polaris trial is comparing our CHOP with our CHIP, Novincristine, plus polituzumab bedotin to see if that antibody drug conjugate can increase the activity of the rest of the regimen. In the relapse setting, there are no approved therapies, and therefore, we have to conduct clinical trials because that's a particularly poor risk group of patients. And we need to develop new strategies, new drugs, new combinations to improve on their outcome. Uh, the vast majority of relapsed refractory diffuse large B-cell lymphoma patients die from their disease, and that's unacceptable. So clinical trials are the way we develop new drugs and get them more quickly to patients to improve their outcome. The patient who has been newly diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma must recognize that this is an aggressive lymphoma, which is potentially fatal, but is also potentially curable. So therapy needs to be instituted as soon as possible. The patient needs to seek out an experienced oncologist or hematologist to give them appropriate therapy and to recommend any clinical trials that might be available to them. Patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma should certainly have hope for the future. First of all, we have a better understanding of the biology and genetics of this disorder. There's a lot of focus on learning more about this disease, and as such, we have recognized that there are several subtypes of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, some of which might be treated differently than others to a better result. There are also new drugs being studied in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, first in the relapse setting, and these will eventually be brought into the frontline setting to improve the current 60% cure rate, hopefully up to above 80, 90%. In the relapse setting for those patients for whom treatment has failed, there is hope that with all of the interest in this disease, cures, and if not cures, certainly improved outcome will be available in the near future. There are new drugs, new strategies, particularly CAR T cell therapy, which is very exciting. And as we learn better the best CAR T cell therapy to use, we learn better how to modulate the toxicities, and we make it more available to patients. Additional patients will benefit from this highly active, very interesting form of immunotherapy. Patients who have been diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma owe it to themselves and to their families to seek out additional information on their disease regarding its diagnosis, its treatment, and its potential outcome. One of the best sources is clearly the Lymphoma Research Foundation. They provide hotlines to hook patients up with other patients, to hook patients up with clinical trials that might be available for their disease, and to provide education and educational materials. The Lymphoma Research Foundation is very active in patient advocacy and trying to get more money from the government to support research in diseases such as diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And finally, there is a scientific advisory board which consists of 45 leading lymphoma experts who meet on a regular basis to review grants that have been submitted and fund some of those grants to study diffuse large B-cell lymphoma's biology, genetics, treatment, and other important factors of the disease, all geared towards enhancing the survival of patients with lymphoma in general and diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in particular.